Hi, I thought I would talk to you guys a little bit today about whistle training and it is snowing really hard outside so I'm doing this in two segments where part of it's in here in my office and part of it's outside. Um, so whistle training is a really good tool to use for um, long distance or if your voice doesn't travel. I know for example my voice does not travel very well so unless you're close to me, you're not really going to hear me no matter how loud I yell. Um, and when I have my dogs out, whether we're hiking or um, backpacking or just out in the backyard, sometimes they just don't hear me. Um, or if they hear me, it's not loud enough for them to decide to listen. So I whistle train them. Um, I also work with my dogs. They, they're trained to do some wildlife work. And so whistle training allows them to go away from me and go out of sight but yet I could call them back right away whether there's a, um, a danger ahead or I just need them back to me. So um, I'll go over a couple different types of whistles. Any type of whistle works. Um, most people think of a dog whistle. Um, this is the cap. And dog whistles, um, you adjust it by this little thingy on the end and it adjusts the pitch and there's supposedly we don't hear them um, but I find that the dog whistles don't work quite as well um, though you can try it it might work really well with your dog um, they aren't as loud to us but they are supposedly extremely loud to a dog um, but it's always a good tool to have my dogs will listen if I'm in the house with it but they don't listen in the yard with it um, I have, this is my favorite whistle, and I probably have some, some extras here, um, because I actually hand these ones out. These are, um, water rescue whistles. They are stainless steel, and they do have a plastic insert in them. Um, they're extremely loud, and, um, this is actually what I carry as an emergency whistle on, for me, because my voice doesn't carry. I've been carrying one of these for almost 30 years now um, and they've gotten better with time they don't crush well I don't want to say don't crush they don't crush very easily um, and even when they're filled with dirt you can still use them so that's what makes them really good um, this is what I use for my dogs and of course I have a tick key on the other end um, in case we run into ticks um, I have a couple sets of these they're floating around one even has a can opener on it for some reason um, but those are the ones I normally carry. And then there is another one, which some of you might go hiking with your dogs with a backpack, but this is the only plastic whistle I have in my house. So um, this is a plastic whistle that's on the clip itself. Um, the whistle is right here. It is actually really loud. This is meant to be an emergency whistle. Um, most backpacks have these on them now. Um, that's also really good. So if you are out, you can use the whistle. Um, it's my day pack so we actually go out for just the day a lot of times and bring supplies with us so the um, the whistles to train them what I do is I, I go through the recall and they have they don't have to it's better if they have the understanding of the basic commands first so you go through the sit down stay come that kind of stuff. Make sure they're proficient in it enough to um, come back to you. And then you start adding the whistle. And when you add the whistle, what you do is your quick, I always do a quick, um, a quick blow through the whistle. And sometimes I'll say their name first, or I'll say their name second. Um, however you want to do it, it's up to you. But if so, if you do the name first, like I'll go Annie, blow the whistle, and she will come because she's already trained to come to her name. Um, or so if you use the word come, um, then you would say come, blow the whistle, and they would come to the name. Slowly start taking that word away and you just blow the whistle. And as you blow the whistle, they will come to you because they already associated that whistle with that action. Um, I do have a video of us outside. You said it was snowing. It's snowing quite hard here. Um, so I'll piece that in. But um, 
there are different whistles. If you've ever watched Border Collie competitions for whistles, different whistles mean different things. And this is how they train them. Um, you can use a different whistle for different things. If you want to use a quick whistle for them to get their attention and for them to come back to you, that's fine. I do a long whistle um, to mean to really come back if they didn't hear it or that I really need them to come back right now. Um, it's also my signal for help, that I need help um, and they will come back. They all do a double whistle sometimes and you can choose to use the whistles for whatever. I use everything for come because that's just what I'm doing with my guys right now. But a double whistle might mean something else to you um, or to your dogs. And Border Collies, they do the same thing. So if you know, one combination of whistles means to go to the right. One combination of whistles means to go to the left. One means to come, one means to go out. So whatever you want to use, whatever combination of whistles that you want to use, um, just make it consistent. So with this, we'll go to my outside clip. And um, hopefully you guys don't have any questions. If you do, just PM me or, or ask them. Um, Okay, we'll go to my outside clip. Action. So, I'm gonna go over the, the different types of whistles that I use um, and what they mean. So the quick whistle is to get the dog's attention and for them to come running towards you. Um, oh, here comes one. Good boy, Jake. And you praise them whenever they get back to you. Um, so that's what it means. That's what it's supposed to do. If they're, if you do the quick whistle and they're not blow and they're not coming, then you could do a double. Or, and of course nobody's away from me right now, but you could also do a really long whistle, which really gets their attention, or signals for help, whichever one you wanna use it for. So that's pretty much. The whistles. Um, you use the commands or the whistles in place of the commands whenever you're training them. Um, but since it's snowing, I'm gonna go back in the house now and I'll finish talking about this. I hope you guys enjoyed my outside clip of me in the snow. Um, special thanks to my husband who filmed it for me. Um, whenever I did the first whistle blow, I had Annie, my healer, standing right beside me. And if you notice that even though she was right beside me, as soon as I blowed, blew the whistle, she looked at my face. She, her ears went up, her body language, she looked at me. That's the, the reaction that you want regardless is, hey, I'm stopping what I'm doing, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing what you mean. She also knew she was right beside me so she doesn't have to come any closer or jump up on me. Um, but um, I honestly didn't even know that or realize it until I was watching the video myself. Um, don't forget that whenever the dogs do come back to you, you, when you're training or even afterwards, once they learn it, you always praise them. Um, if you are training them with treats, make sure it's something high value that they want when they come back. Um, Praise is always a good thing because that way you always have it with you. You don't always have treats necessarily when you need them. Um, even if you don't give treats all the time, if they, let's say, take off after something and you are able to blow the whistle, get their attention and get them to come back to you, then, you know, give them a treat. Give them something that says, hey, I'm really happy for you coming back to me. I'm really happy for you listening. Um, other than that, um, Hopefully this made sense to you and you were able to um, take some lessons away from my video. And uh, like I stated before, if you have any questions, feel free to either PM me or comment. Um, and I will answer the questions as soon as I see them. Um, thank you very much.